Oh, hi. This week we're upgrading an old project because it's gonna make my life easier, which is my little keychain zipper pouch that I used for dog bags. Since I made that first one, I had it on Bert's leash for two years at least. As pointed out by a couple people, having a buttonhole or something might make it easier. Obviously I can't fit this roll of dog bags through a buttonhole, so I'm still gonna have the zipper. I'm gonna try and see how a buttonhole works as far as being able to like pull these out one by one instead of having to unzip the bag, take the roll out, pull it apart, get the bag I need, put it back in, zip it back up. When it is eight degrees outside like it is currently, I'm trying to clean things up with a quickness. Any time I could save will be choice. Also sometimes when I'm pulling the bag out of the bag, pulling the bags out of the bags. I have dropped the roll and then it's fallen in like mud or snow or just a public street that I don't really wanna engage with tactily. So let's give it a try. I did fit this into the original bag I had and it looks like the same size should work. So I'm excited that I get to use like one of my own patterns I have put together for y'all for myself. Here's what you need. So the main fabric I'm gonna use also how cute is this? Can you tell I like teal things? <laughs> My main piece is gonna be five inches by six inches. And then I'm gonna cut two lining pieces cause I need an opening at the bottom to flip everything out. So the outer piece will be one whole swath of fabric but the lining will have to be separated into halves. So it's gonna be five inches by three and a half and I'm getting the three and a half cause it's the six inches from the main fabric divided in two. So the three and then half inch seam allowance on each side. So three and a half. Look at me doing math. And then I'm gonna need a little strip of fabric so that I can make a tab where I can attach the little key ring. And then I have a zipper. This is much longer than I need it to be, but I don't have any like four inch zippers hanging around. Oh, I'm also gonna grab some interfacing, put on this outer bit and I'll need a little key ring bit. I do already have a bigger one looped through the top of my leash. And then yeah, the usual suspects. I have scissors, pins, marking tools, sewing machine. Actually, I'm probably not using pins for any of this, but you feel free to use them for yours. And then some kind of measuring tool, ironing board, iron, hands, eyes. I think that covers everything. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna cut my pieces and then I'm gonna show you how I'm attaching everything together. Oh yeah, and I suppose it's important to mention I'm gonna be using my buttonhole foot. You could also use a grommet for this, for the size bag I'm using. The only grommets I have would be overkill. These are for like fixing a tarp or a tent loop or something like that. I think I used some to fix a flag at some point. Let me know if you wanna do a grommet project sometime and I'll come up with something. Cause it does use all of these little bits. And anytime I get to fuck with a hammer, get out some feelings. I find it helpful. All right, I went ahead and just sewed the tabs together already. I do like having one at one end for the loop that has the key ring in it, and then also another one so you can like gain a little purchase when you go to unzip the bag. Maybe not crucial, I find it helpful. Tabs are here. That was definitely not a New Jersey accent. Oh, and because I hate turning skinny tubes out, I did just make these like a bias tape, folded it in half, and then folded in those raw edges towards the center. So they look all nice and neat. Then I have my pair of three and a half by five inch pieces. Then I have my interfaced five inch by six inch piece and then my zip. Let's attach to the zip. So it's gonna be one of the shorter ends. So the five inch side, I'm just gonna do it in the middle. So I'm not dealing with any of the metal bits either end. So I'm gonna sew the right side of the fabric to the right side of the zipper. You would think after years and years and years and years of filming with this kind of camera. I think I've regularly been doing sewing videos for like almost a decade and filmed other weird shit before that. And all that time, you would think I'd figure out which direction was facing which. But it's like mirrored for me. When you watch it, I'm normal looking. Nothing's flipped. Anyways, I'm gonna sew this right sides together. Oh my gosh, incredible. What a feat. Now I'm gonna attach the lining to the underside of the zipper. It would be the wrong side, but the lining fabric I'm using, it doesn't matter. I did used to do this step in one, like do all three layers together, but I had enough like frustrations with that happening that it's worth taking the time to do these separately to make it look that much better. Hilarious looking back on some of the corners I would cut in my earlier days of sewing and some are practical. Like if you can get it consistently nice every time, absolutely go for it. I was not. Five inch side of the lining piece to the wrong side of the zipper. Ta-da, okay. These are all attached now. This is what that looks like. Also, I think I figured out why I enjoy sewing long zippers is because there's an obvious edge where your zipper foot's gonna go against. So like lining up 
that second row of stitching with the original one, it was very easy because there was basically a seam guide right there made by them teeths. Anyways, now we're gonna open this up and flip this up here. So right side of the fabric to the right side of the zipper. That's what this looks like. And now I'm gonna attach the other lining piece to that wrong side of the zipper. All right, here's what we got going on. So I'm gonna unzip the zipper and then I'm gonna top stitch across here which is also going to keep the lining I, I like to kind of pull the fabric away from the zipper on both the top and bottom to get a nice crisp edge up here and making sure the lining isn't getting caught in the zipper teeth and do that along here same on the other side and that's what that looks like I really like this color combination I wasn't sure at first but now that everything's coming together I'm enjoying it all right now here's the most important part if your zipper is longer and you're putting it together like I am I'm gonna make sure the tab is somewhere in the middle here. It needs to be open so I can flip everything back out, but it needs to be between the edges here or you're not gonna be able to open or close the dang thing. Still inside out, so like the right side of the outer fabric should be inside the tube here. I'm going to line up the bottoms of the lining fabric. I guess I will toss a couple pins in here. And I'm gonna stitch in probably two inches each side, maybe an inch and a half each side, because I need a big enough gap in the middle to turn everything right side out, but I do need the edges to have their seams finished. Cool, that should cover it. Now, I did put a little notch in the center part of the outer fabric, just because it's a full loop. I don't have a seam to go by where the center point is. I'm going to lay this flat so that the center notch I just made lines up with the zipper teeth. Again, making sure the zipper pull is somewhere in the middle here. This is also where I'm gonna take one of my tabs. I'm gonna fold that in half and I'm gonna stick this finished loop end. Oh, and you know what? Like I did with the wristlets I made recently. Let me know if you want a more in-depth video about how I went making the actual wrist bits. I just kind of like guessed along the way when I made my first one and it seemed to turn out okay. But if you're stuck on figuring out how to make a wristband, it's much less complicated than I thought it was. So I can do a more involved video on that part of the bags I made a couple weeks ago, which because those sold out so quickly, cause dang y'all. Yeah, I'm putting a whole new batch together and I'm having so much fun working on them, picking out all the fabrics and stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna tuck this in here. I feel like I was heading somewhere else with a sentence. Oh, I remember now, <sighs> like I did with the tab for the wristlets. Jeez, tell me you have ADHD without telling me you have ADHD. I'm gonna sew these two ends together just so they're not gonna go wonky while I'm sewing it with the rest of it because there's kind of a lot going on in here. Yes, an extra step, but it's gonna look nicer and it's gonna give me less of a headache when I'm doing the other step where this is getting inserted. So I'm gonna do that for both tabs, just tack the ends together. Okay, now I'm gonna sew this tab in right along the zipper there, trying to center it right above the teeth and then lining up that center mark with the teeth also. So it looks like this tab is sandwiched right here. And then I'm also gonna line up that edge we just stitched to the underside of the zipper teeth like this. So there's like a little double smush happening. And now I can stitch straight across here. And the appeal of doing the zipper this way is, yeah, I don't have to account for any of the metal bits. It doesn't have to be involved. Get it the hell out of here. Anyways, I'm gonna do the same for the other side. Just squanch everything down. Line it all up with the zipper teeth. I'll scooch my little tab in here and try to make sure these bits are as close together. Yeah, I'm gonna zigzag. Okay, okay. One more prep step. <laughs> I'm gonna zigzag these two edges together. Just a little anchor spot right here so I'm not fighting with these flopping around everywhere. All right, there we go. Because the stress of keeping an eye on both layers of the outer fabric, both layers of the inner fabric, plus a tab, plus these little floppy boys, no thank you. Our zipper is partway open and our lining has a gap in the bottom. So flipping this out after will be a piece of cake. Gonna go across both sides here and then we'll see how we did. Okay, cool. Looks like a little packet of chips. Can you tell I'm hungry? I did back tack to reinforce where the tab is, but that did also mean stitching back and forth over where the teeth were. So I went nice and slow because that's where things are gonna break if they're gonna. All right, and now I obviously don't need the rest of the zipper. So I'm gonna trim down these sides, maybe even clip the corners just to reduce some bulk. Okie doke. Next, I'm gonna flip the bag part way inside out. So like the actual wrong sides of all the fabric is hidden away, but the bag is still technically inside out. It's almost like Inception where there's two levels of the inside outedness. Okay, so we have 
technically a pouch. It probably could hold my little bag roll as is, but I want to box out these corners. So I'm going to push my thumb. So I have this little triangle and you want to make sure you're keeping both layers flush, like the outer fabric and the lining are together. So I am like pushing against that outer fabric to tuck it into the lining here. And then, yeah, I'm gonna go across about half inch, three quarters in. I obviously don't want it so close that it's eating up all of this space here, but I do wanna take up some of it. So I'm probably gonna go halfway across. Perhaps we'll split the difference and call it five eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna do that to all four corners, stitch across this triangle here. Oh, someone's decided to join us. He can tell the project's wrapping up. What a good boy. And this project's for you. What a sweet bean. Actually, I am literally done other, oh, I forgot to add the key ring to the tab before I sewed it in. Okay, not me getting distracted by a dog and completely forgetting that we're upgrading this bag and not just making the same thing we used to make. We're making it better and adding the buttonhole. I took time to hand sew the gap in the lining shut because we're done inside the inside. Now we can flip the whole thing out and assess. This is just forever the magical part the first time you see it in all its glory. Okay, it's looking, looking pretty good, I think. I don't want the buttonhole on the bottom center like I initially thought because that's where the seam for the lining is and that's like the one place that has extra bulk. So I think I'm just gonna pick a side here and add the buttonhole there. I'm gonna unzip this as far as it'll go. That's also part of not adding the zipper tabs that would have made the gap even smaller to fit stuff in here and it's already a tight space so I didn't want to lose any square footage you know so I'm gonna go in and basically where the triangles are pointing here I'm gonna go right between those so it'll end up on the side here I'm just gonna do a quick little buttonhole okay well apparently I need to watch my own notes on buttonhole foots because it didn't occur to me that I need to fit the foot inside the bag but the buttonhole foot is fucking huge and bigger than the entire bag to start with. So that didn't work. So I ended up having to do the jerry-rigged zigzag stitch situation, which is just two narrow rows of zigzag stitching that are parallel to each other with like a very narrow gap in between. And then I did a wider kind of bar tack at the top and bottom. So yeah, it's not as clean as it would have been with the actual buttonhole foot, but I, I think it's gonna be okay. Also, I don't think Bert's gonna judge me if there's some imperfections, but I'm really proud of how nice I made this look. This is exactly why I kept the tabs on here because it's a little tough to open the zipper without having something to grab onto. So I'm glad I did that. That's all working nice. Everything's in place. The corners look nice. There's no puckers going on there. Now for the irreversible part, I'm gonna take my seam ripper. All right, now we got our little access hole. Before we try the functionality of it, I'm gonna attach the key. A dog making dreaming noises is never not gonna make me stop in my tracks. It's always the cutest shit. He makes the best sounds. Dogs are too good for us. Anyway, I'm gonna put this ring through here. Normally I shred the fuck out of my nails when I do this kind of thing, trying to pry this open, but the lovely Jeanette sent me these rad pliers I didn't know existed that are specifically for opening key rings like this. So it holds it open. Again, had I put this in the loop before I sewed everything in, this wouldn't have to be happening, but here we are. A little tough with the fabric because the metal wants to go through it. Oh, but these pliers are making it so easy. Dang, cool. That's very exciting. I need to keep these in my line of vision more often because I have forgotten that I had these and unnecessarily wrecked some nails. I really like this fabric too. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm not always a floral person. There has to be a very particular situation happening, but this kind of monochromatic leafy floral, I'm really enjoying. Now we're gonna put this in here. Oh, I didn't unzip the zipper all the way. That would be helpful. And then I guess I'm just gonna push this through here with my thumb. Yeah. All right, cool. That was less of a struggle than I thought it was gonna be. I zip this up and then as we're walking around, I can just hold the bag. Oh, hell yes. I just made my life so much easier. This was so easy. I mean, other than the hard parts, it was really easy. <laughs> I'm so stinking excited. Without getting into specifics about what's going on, I'll just say I've been watching the news way, 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 way more than I have since probably fall of 2016. I've never paid this close attention to something since because 
it breaks me every time I try to keep up with things. That has definitely made my anxiety go through the roof, but I also can't stop myself from looking and I spend way too much time thinking about it. I know, I know it's good to be informed, but also if you're making yourself non-functional, that doesn't help anybody. I will say I have never enjoyed thinking about sunflowers and sunflower seeds more than this week. And I will leave it at that so we don't have to stress out about things going on. I hope things are better by the time this is out but who the fuck knows? Something I do know that's gonna happen that I'm genuinely really scared about, but I have to do for my own quality of life is I'm getting a tonsillectomy at the end of March. So I likely won't have a video out that first day of April. Oh yeah, I guess April Fool's Day. I could have had my surgery then, but decided, though I'm not a very superstitious person, that seems like bad energy to have my first surgery where I actually have to go under for something. Cause I've had oral surgery and I've had like stitches, I've had a biopsy done, but I've never actually had to go under general anesthesia for anything. Didn't want to do that shit on April Fool's Day. No thank you. If you have gotten your tonsils out as an adult, please talk to me about it in the comments. If you have words of calm encouragement as far as going under anesthesia, where I'm sure there are people that have to go under fairly regularly and I have no family history of issues with it. I just, I've never done it before. So of course I'm scared of it. So I've also been dealing like booking that this past week. So I am just, a much more stressed out person, but I have to say the medication I've been taking, that's an antidepressant that also helps ADHD stuff. I think I'd be a much bigger mess if I didn't have that like bolstering my, my baseline day to day. But yeah, getting tonsil surgery the week of my birthday, because it is in a way a gift to myself getting my tonsils out. They've been hurting me and bothering me. I even have videos from seven or eight years ago where when I first started having really intense issues, I've, I've had sore throat problems for most of my life and I've been coughing in the middle of the night because they get irritated from like post nasal drip and stuff. And I also get tonsil stones, which are painful. They're fucking awful. They've made my life so much worse for so many reasons. But yeah, some of my older videos, I can picture myself standing here working on like a t-shirt bodycon dress and having to take swigs of whiskey because even painkillers weren't helping my throat. And I thought it was just like a sore throat problem. It's been my tonsils because it was never strep. I will gain a lot of relief from this, but I know like recovery is not gonna be comfortable. I'll be out of commission for at least a week, if not two when that's going on. We'll see how things go. I, I have no idea what to expect as far as their recovery. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. It's modern medicine. Technology has advanced. This is a pretty routine thing. I know it's harder once you're an adult, but well, anyways, just words of encouragement would be very much appreciated and I hope it's okay that I take some time off when that is happening, especially for y'all over on Patreon because I view that as like my job, right? And if I take two weeks off, if that would frustrate y'all that support me financially, I totally get it and uh, just wanna give you a heads up about what to expect in the coming weeks. And speaking of Patreon folks, it is cause of everybody here that I'm able to take the time and do this and I get to treat it like one of my jobs and figure out how to improve upon shit that I've made before and just, be better at sewing in general and share all the things with you. Making the patterns for stuff like this available to y'all, it's up on my Patreon. You just have to search pattern in the tags and it'll say miniature zipper pouch or mini zipper pouch. I can't imagine I actually wrote up miniature. All right, I think that's gonna do it for me, but I will see you all back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. I feel like I made that sound much more complicated than it needed to be. Story of my life though, right?